Rose Gilmore here from Wood Tracker. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a buck saw out in the woods. But the materials you're going to need are, of course, a saw blade. This one is a 24 inch blade. So you can see some blades actually come with a cap or a protrusion at the end, which can hold them in place. Since this one doesn't and instead has holes, we're going to use two bolts to thread to each of the holes. So we'll also need that. And we'll need some rope. Here I'm using paracord. As far as materials we find in the bush, we'll need three pieces of wood, two of equal length, and one that is more or less the length of the saw blade. They should be of a thickness that is comfortable for you to hold with your hands. We'll start by taking one of the short pieces of wood and splitting one of the ends. The split doesn't have to be deep, just about an inch or so. We'll repeat the same thing with the other piece of wood. Just to make sure the ends are smooth and leveled off so it doesn't throw off your accuracy later on. Now that we have the wood split, we'll go to one side of the split and go 90 degrees to it. So you have the split running this way. We will make a notch about half an inch from the bottom on the back here, running 90 degrees across the split. Same thing on the other piece of wood. We have the split running this way, 90 degrees to the split, about half an inch from the bottom. We make a notch. These two notches will simply hold the two bolts that we have so they don't slide up and down. That's the only purpose. Now let me show you where I'm going with this. The saw blade will slide into the split. We'll then take one of the bolts just thread it to one of the holes and make sure it lines up in the little notch that we made. We'll do the same thing on the other end with the other piece of wood. What we have here now 
are the two ends of the buck saw. To continue the project, we will take this long piece of wood and put it as the center member of the buck saw and then proceed to tighten the cordage from the top and tighten the whole saw together, completing the project. So the next step is to measure out and fit the centerpiece. Now this is going to be the tricky part of the project. Fitting this wood in the middle of the buck saw is going to either make or break the project. And there are two things to consider. The first one is that if we make this saw as a rectangle, it's going to move in this direction. And the center piece of wood will do nothing to prevent that. By making it really tight, we reduce the problem somewhat, but if you're really going to be using this saw, it's going to be an issue. To solve that problem, we will bring the top ends of the side pieces together to make a trapezoid instead of a rectangle. This shape is much more likely to hold together without moving than the rectangle. The second issue is that if we do not fit the central piece of wood very well, if there's any movement, the big danger is that the side pieces are going to twist along their own axis, which will twist the plate and bind it and may possibly snap it during use. So, two things. We have to measure it correctly so we create a trapezoid instead of a rectangle and we have to make sure to fit it well so there's no twisting in the side pieces. Okay, so create the desired trapezoidal shape and lay the saw down, at which point we can proceed to measure out the central piece of wood and mark the way you want to cut it. Of course, it's always going to wind up being on a knot, just to make your job more difficult. Once we have it marked, we have to cut it. When making these cuts, always leave yourself a little bit more wood than you think you're going to need. Because it's always easy to remove wood, it's much harder to make it appear. Okay, I saved you the five minutes it took me to cut this piece of wood. The hard part is not the cutting itself, it's making sure that everything is nicely leveled and at the proper angle. It's tedious and time consuming part of this project. But once we're done, the position, central piece of wood and measure out where it's going to fit in the side pieces. saw blade, so we no longer need it for measurements. And we can start leveling out the surfaces where the joint is going to be. Now make sure that it's exactly on the opposite side of where we made the notch. So on one side of the split, we have the notch for the bolt. On the other side of the split, at a 90 degree angle, we have the place where the 
central piece of wood is going to fit. The first step is to make a flat surface, then we'll worry about making the right angle so the two pieces fit perfectly and create the trapezoidal shape that we're going after. There are many way, ways to make these connections between the three pieces. The one I'm showing you right now is fairly simple, but I find that it works. At the end of the day, it's very easy to make a buck saw like this one, just so you can take a few pictures of it and post it on your favorite website. But to make one that actually works without bending, without twisting, without snapping the saw blade, it requires more care and attention. In particular when it comes to these joints. Now that we have the notches buffed out, unfortunately we have to put the whole thing back together before we can start making any adjustments. see one of the sides over here on the right fits fairly well the side on the left does not and we have more of a rectangle than a trapezoid that's because we have two issues one is the angle on the notch here is insufficient so I have to take it in from the bottom some more to make an angle that runs in this direction and you can see it's twisted for it to align properly I'll have to bring it like this which twists the blade exactly what we don't want so I also have to take more wood from the side facing me and I'll actually put the blade on so we can making adjustments as we go along.
let's measure again. We have solved one of the problems. It's no longer twisted and the blade is not moving in any particular direction, but we still need to take more wood from the bottom for the trapezoidal shape. At the end of the day you're doing this by hand so you have to fit these pieces individually and play it by ear it's a it's not like we're doing it with a shop so we can make exact measurements At the end of the day if it works it works and right now it seems to be working now that we have the frame the way we want it we'll have to make two notches on the top outside, outside parts of the side pieces of wood. That will just be there to hold the string in place, make sure it doesn't slip off. The notches will resemble the ones we made for the bolts. Now before we complete the project by tying everything together, we're going to need another small piece of wood just so we can create tension in the rope. To tie it, you don't need to do anything fancy. Just make a square knot on one end. Then Take the time you need. To make sure everything is aligned. and make the rope as tight as you can. Just by twisting. When you're finished with it, wrap it around, tie it off. Then we take the piece of wood and thread it between the two lines of rope and begin twisting it. The twisting will create the high amount of tension that you need to keep the saw blade in place. Then slide it out slightly and let it rest on the centerpiece. We now have a functioning buck saw. Hopefully you can see the blade is perfectly aligned even though none of the pieces of wood that we use are perfectly straight. Just by playing around with the joints, making sure they fit properly. We have a very strong saw that doesn't move with a blade that's not going to bind. Like they say, talk is cheap. So let's see if this all works. Seems 
seems to work just fine. The only difference from a commercially made saw is that this is probably a bit heavier because it's made out of wood instead of lightweight aluminum or whatever other material they use. Other than that, it seems to work just as well. Now I ran around and did some more sawing uh, with the buck saw we just made and it's surpassing my expectations. I haven't had any wobble in the frame, I have not had any twisting of the blade, it's performed very well. In fact, I even dropped it uh, and I expected it to fall apart, but not even close. In fact, absolutely no movement in the frame. So, definitely a viable option if you're out in the woods and you only want to carry a saw blade and maybe some rope. You can easily make one in the woods. Take some time, not as convenient as carrying a commercially made buck saw, but definitely an option.